Being from the west side of the state, there are a lot of great ports that I try to hit each year. One port that is right in the middle of the early and late season action is Grand Haven. This morning was especially fun for me because I had some family along for the trip, as well as a friend and co-worker, Mr. John Robertson. John, who works with us here at MUCC, used to be the head honcho in the fisheries department for the DNR. As we slid out the mouth of the Grand River, John told me a little bit about how long he's fished this area. I think I came down here in about 1995 is when I started fishing here. I had fished a lot up at, um, at Detour and I'd fished a lot over Rogers City. Prior to that I'd fished in Lake Superior quite a bit. Uh, but we actually chose this place to come to because the fishing is so good here. We basically had fishing starting in um, April. Uh, Jimmy, if, if the weather is warm enough for people to get out, uh, and it would last w well through October, but you know most of us are thinking about shooting deer in October, so we kind of drift away from it. Um, but you can fish here virtually every decent month of the year, and a lot of the northern ports don't have that advantage. We had a quick rain shower pass through that seemed to fire up the fish a little bit, and we had one on. Joining us today were my father-in-law, Dale Domstein, and his son, Greg, and another brother-in-law, Ryan Delp. Ryan was up to bat first and has done a lot of fishing out east, but this was his first time on Lake Michigan, and he was handling this center pin reel like a pro. Have you been using those center pin rod, uh, reels like that? Uh, six, seven years. Really? Lately, yeah. I used them a lot in the 70s, like I said, when I was fishing in Lake Superior. <laughs> but they had another dimension to it. They work pretty good for that copper line? Oh, they're perfect. You know, they, they keep the wire from uh, developing any kind of memory. Okay. Good job. Nice fit. Not a monster by any means, but a good, solid, healthy fish. First Lake Michigan fish. That's right. Nice job. Thank you, sir. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Having John on board to talk about the state of the fishery is kind of like golfing with Jack Nicholas. He knows what he's talking about. My involvement with the salmon goes back to the, to the year that they were introduced. And I was a new, um, new biologist at the time. Um, and I worked in the hatchery system then, and we raised the fish that, that we stocked. Uh, later on, I became a field biologist, so I worked on, you know, on the, on the actual resource itself instead of hatcheries. Uh, so I've been with it for a long time. You know, that's what, close to 40 years now. Um, and I continue to stay involved in it. I'm on the uh, citizen advisory group that Department of Natural Resources have four, has four fisheries, which is something I participated in, in founding and getting it rolling. Uh, and that's a really important point too. Uh, knowing what needs to be done and having the ability to do it are two entirely different things. The Citizen Advisory Group brings people from all of our major organizations uh, together at the table with our research biologists and our management biologists and we talk about changes lay out the data, talk about what needs to be done, and we build in almost always a large amount of public support for doing the right thing. So being able to convert the science into action is one of the things that I was fortunate enough to participate in my career. John has done a lot for the salmon fishery in this state, and he was doing a pretty good job figuring out the salmon for us today. That's a good fish. Stop a second. Oh, man. That's a big one. Don't lose him, Greggy! This monster did look like a good fish, and I'm sure it probably was. That's Greggy. We lost him. We? <laughs> Fortunately for Greg, we did find another fish pretty quickly, and it was about to get in the boat. Now, none of these guys do a whole lot of fishing, and to see them each tangle with some fish makes you realize many of us take this kind of fishing for granted too often. Nice you doing, Pretty nice, huh? Like like Dale was next to do battle, and as he got a few pointers from John, we had our first double of the day. 
As we work these fish in, John talked about how he got hooked up with us here at MUCC. And I wanted to get involved with MUCC because um, I had worked with MUCC all the time I was in the department. Um, and having retired from the department, going to work for a nonprofit like MUCC, who provides critical support for uh, doing the right thing, do, doing what's best for the science, doing what's best for the resource, uh, it's just a natural progression for me. That advocacy role they play, in many cases, helps fight the political interventions that get in the way a lot of times. So MEC is a great organization, and, and I'm just thrilled to death that they were willing to hire me. This was the biggest fish of the day, and of course, being a brother-in-law or outlaw, depending on the day, Ryan was his normal, humble self. Oh, yeah, take that, Greg. <laughs> That's the big one. That's a good fish. Jimmy, if you need any tips at any point, just let me know. Class is every Saturday. Well, we didn't limit out today, but we had a lot of nice fish for the dinner table. Special thanks to John for not only letting us tag along today, but for all the work he and countless other fishery biologists have done year in and year out, so that you and I can take friends and family to a very special place, Michigan's Out of Doors.